This week I baked giant bananas because I think we all feel a bit bananas. You know what I mean? <laughs> We're bananas in pajamas. That's what who we all are now. I baked 16 pounds of my banana cake in two rectangular pans, so eight pounds each. I'm going to level both cakes and remove the caramelization from the bottom. Imagine banana cake in bananas. That's the ultimate <laughs> cake exception, right? I already made carrot cake in a giant carrot, so it's only fair that I treat banana the same. The next thing I'm gonna do is use circle cutters to cut perfect circles of banana cake out of my two rectangles. I'm using two different size cutters, so I chose a three inch cutter and a three and a quarter inch cutter. Yeah, that's what I did. So I'm gonna cut three inch circles out of one cake, three and a quarter inch circles out of the other cake, and then I'm gonna line up all my banana circles and simple syrup them. Can I just tell you, I've never seen Chengis so happy. <laughs> Because when you cut circles out of a rectangle, there's obviously like little diamonds in between that get left behind. And there were a lot of scraps and I made up for the lack of banana cake on set over the past few years. I just <laughs> stuffed him full of banana cake. syrup has soaked into my banana cake circles, I'm going to glue them together or sandwich them together with ganache. Now normally when I fill in stack cakes I do it upright. I'm not doing this for the banana, I need to stack them all sideways, kind of like I built the carrot. Then what I need to do in order to help the curve, you kind of have to slice some of the discs on a diagonal because they naturally want to line up straight and the banana is not straight. And mainly because I love chocolate banana. How good would it be if you bit into a banana and there was chocolate inside? <laughs> like with all this grafting they do in the world, can't they figure that out? <laughs> like when you eat a banana, there's just like a row of chocolate in the middle. That would be great. And I need to repeat it a second time because as usual, Yolanda has to torture herself and make two difficult things. <laughs> My defense is I want one whole and one peeled. Right, that's fair. Okay, our cakes are chilled, the ganache is fully set, it's time to carve these cakes. So they have a nice curve, but they still need to be rounded out and they need to be a little more tapered at the top and at the bottom of the banana. So I used a small serrated knife for this. I found it easier. I had bananas as a model, much easier to work with than watermelons, once again. <laughs> if you leave them sitting around a long time though, they do get brown. So, <laughs> so, um, they, get, they, get, they get upset. They get, they get upset, they get yeah. <laughs> so just take your time carving the shape of the banana and once you're happy, you can crumb coat the whole banana in chocolate ganache. That's right, more chocolate. <laughs> Yum. And now that the crumb coat is chilled, I'm going to go back and ice the bananas with ganache. Now I need to pay close attention to the fact that when a banana is whole, even though it looks smooth and curved, you can actually see lines. So I wanna create that with my ganache. So I'm using a sturdier ganache. I'm gonna make sure to really create those little angles. It's almost like I'm making a pentagon over a curved rounded cake. Like I don't know how to describe it, but this, what? like I'm trying to ice it so that it has a, there's footage, there's better footage than this, <laughs> but I'm trying to ice it so that you can see those angles the way banana skin looks. And then on the- Oh, skin. Yeah. yeah. I think the inside piece of fruit, which also has lines. Yes. The skin has like actual, it's yes. kind of like- On the second banana, I only want to do it halfway because where the banana is peeled, you're right, the fruit inside, even though it has texture, it's much more smooth and round. No angles. Yeah, yeah no angles. I don't have angled bananas. Um, okay. <laughs> This is one of those cakes that like, as I'm doing it, I'm hoping this is gonna work to my advantage, but I'm not really sure because I've never made a giant banana. 
You're on the edge of your seat now. I know. And like some cakes I make on the channel, I think to myself, how did it take this long? This was one of them. The first thing I'm gonna do is cover the half of the banana that is peeled. So the actual fruit part of the banana, the part that you would bite. So I'm using a very pale yellow fondant. It's extremely pale. And I'm just gonna cover the top half of that banana. And now I need to texture this fondant. So I'm using a sculpting tool, um, a veining tool actually, and I'm first doing lines that are uh, vertical along the curve. And then I need to use that same tool to create lines that run horizontally between two vertical lines and in either direction. So try not to think about it too much. Get those first uh, vertical lines really nice along the banana and then the ones in between, it has a texture, yeah. almost like a fabric-like texture. Yeah. Um, yeah. I obviously, I, I peeled one of the models. I asked the <laughs> model to model nude. So, just, it was just top only, top only. So, um, she peeled and then I used that banana as a, yeah, I use that banana as a model. Now I'm gonna put this one in the fridge and I'm gonna take out the banana that's not peeled and cover it. And it's time to cover this entire banana. So I roll my fondant out. Always make sure to measure your cakes so that you know when you roll it out and you drape it on top, it will cover every part of the cake. Bananas are interesting because even as they ripen, that yellow changes. There's a stage where it's like, I only want to eat it as a cooked green banana, but once yes. it's ripe enough to eat raw, then I'll eat it. Um, I feel like this is up for discussion. People feel very strongly about how they eat bananas. So leave a comment below, and then I'm going to smooth it all along the cake. I'm really happy because I am noticing my angles. So I'm going to use a fondant smoother to help me um, accentuate those angles. It's really weird because even though there's angles, the cake is still curved. You could just bang into the curve. You'll see what I mean if any of you try to make two giant banana cakes. Um, you know, now's the time. And now here's the tricky part. At the top where the banana has a stem that's usually joined to a whole bunch of stems in the bunch, I need to figure out a way to do this. So I had already decided this wouldn't be cake because it's in the middle of the banana and there's no way a thin piece of cake would just hold up in the air and then hold up fondant. So what I'm going to do is take the time to insert a dowel and I'm using a plastic hollow dowel. So they have these dowels, they're plastic. This one is like three quarters of an inch. It's like a giant straw almost. I was gonna say, cool. And the reason is it's much lighter than wood and it's also much thicker and I want that. Uh, here I am again making another nub. This time okay. it's a banana nub. Um, okay, so now I have to cover, go back to the other banana, which is the peeled banana. And I need to do the same thing, but I need to cover just halfway up the cake, right? Actually, I'm wrong. Oh, wait a minute. Let me tell you about this. <laughs> so, when you peel a banana, right, the outside of the peel is the darker yellow banana cover, color. Yeah. But when you peel the inside, the inside of the peel is the same fleshy color as the banana, right? Yeah, it's almost like a layer of it. It's like a layer comes off. So I kept thinking to myself, what do I do? Do I cover this cake, cut it, peel it, and then try to glue the, the lighter fondant into the peels? Like I just couldn't wrap my head around how to do it. And then I thought, here's what I'm gonna do. I took my soft yellow fondant, I rolled it out really thin, and then I draped it over the part of my banana that's already covered, so the fruit part of the banana, but I'm not gluing it to the cake, okay? Then I'm gonna brush the top surface of this light fondant, the second layer of light fondant, with water. So I'm brushing that whole top surface with water. Now I'm gonna roll out my banana colored fondant, like the darker yellow, and drape the whole cake, okay? And then, 
Just like I did before with the first banana, uh, I'm going to smooth it all along the banana. I'm gonna fold it at the bottom to get a nub. I'm going to use my smoother halfway up to accentuate those angles, and I'm gonna trim away the excess from the bottom. The only difference here is we don't need to create our stem just yet, because we need to peel this banana. So I took a sharp paring knife, and I cut along the banana, along those angled lines. So what I did is I just carefully cut away and peel back and it was awesome because that lighter fondant did stick to the yellow fondant and so the inside of the peel was a different color than the outside. That's so cool, yeah. Sometimes risks have consequences. <laughs> God. So although I'm happy I did it this way and it worked, the problem is when I was cutting one of the peels, my knife went too far and actually cut into the banana oh, that no. I had textured already. Oh no. Ah! Now I'm bananas. So I'm just gonna cover it with another layer of thin light yellow fondant and then texture the banana again. I don't wanna rip off what's there because I run the risk of dirtying everything with ganache. The trickiest part was making sure I got that fondant under the peels. There are no seams in bananas. That's why I chose them. I need to texture the inner light fondant of the peel because that same banana fruit texture is also inside the peel. So again, I'm going back to my veining tool and just carefully marking those lines just like I did to the banana. If you're currently going bananas and you're a banana in pajamas, please subscribe to this channel. There's loads of cakes to watch in all your spare time. Oh, and to make, yes, make them. You don't have to start with giant bananas. You can, you can start smaller. We actually have a bunch of live streams available. You can bake at home in your pajamas. So check out the link below. Maybe there's something you wanna try and make. And I also um, clay extruded some of the light yellow fondant and put a few strands along the peels. You know when you peel a banana and you get those like extra strands? That's my one complaint about bananas. I could do without that. So I'd like some chocolate inside and none of those strands. Thank you. Thank you farmers. Yeah, if you guys have any complaints about fruit that you'd like to leave below, we'll put a link to the fruit complaint board. Um, it's already filled with comments about watermelons. Don't even get me started on mealy apples. Don't make me go there. Oh, now my biggest beef now is the flavorless strawberries that exist. Yeah, they're weird. They're, they're totally weird. You're right. Like <laughs> I ate a strawberry that tasted like dirt. I'm not even joking. It's like some weird, like, prank. I need to paint the banana and the inside of the skin. So the fruit part of the banana and the inside of the skin because bananas brown quickly. So right now, it's the right color and it's very light, but let's face it, it only remains that color for one second after you peel it, right? So we gotta make it look like air has hit this banana. And in order to do that, I'm painting these surfaces with vanilla. It's the perfect color and it's not too dark. And painting with vanilla is really great because it smells amazing. Um, and it's already, you don't need to dissolve it at all. It's already thin. So I just painted all those surfaces with vanilla to give it a more natural banana look. Oh, now it's time to paint the banana like the skin of the banana. So I'm going to dry brush the bottom of the banana near the nub and the top, the stem, with a little bit of a color I have called citrine. It's actually um, a really bright yellow when you dissolve this powder with alcohol, but when you use it dry, it's more of like a really yellowy green. And I'm dry brushing these parts of the banana to make it look like it was once green and it ripened to be yellow. It has to look like natural coloring. And I also cut the stem 
of the banana a bit because often when you rip it off the bunch it rips and then that sort of open wound turns really black you know what I'm talking about like when you rip the banana away from its siblings right there's like a wound so that part I also painted with my brown food coloring now it's time for the part I was avoiding. <laughs> Uh-oh. Well, happened? I've got to, I mean, i got to bruise the banana a bit. It has to have some brown spots, some brown lines. Like, they're very tender, right? You just, you mishandle them and you can tell, right? I'm going to use a few different brushes. I'm going to use a smaller brush and just start to paint dots. Some of the dots are separate. Some are in a cluster. I also sort of painted fine lines along the angled lines of the banana and then used a dry brush to go back and blend them together. I did a couple of lines that look like gashes, so not along the angle, but just sort of here and there. All new membership teas and sprinkles are here. This month's tea is Cake It For The Gram and our blends are Cake Talk and Cakestagram. You can sign up for our memberships using the link below to get these before they're gone forever. Okay, and then uh, that's pretty much it. That's how you cake giant bananas. Steps. <laughs> yeah, just follow the 7,000 steps and you too can make giant bananas. <laughs> if you loved watching me create this cake, you can find more cakes right here. Thanks, bananas in pajamas! Bye! I'll see you next week! <laughs>